art to me, it's, I mean, maybe how I interpret this, but I got started with where, with what I do, kind of influenced by family members when I was younger because they were always doing things by hand. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother Swagger was always crocheting, and that, she had me started crocheting when I was probably four years old. And that was an influence, just making things and when you finish them, sort of that sense of satisfaction of making something with your hands. Mm -hmm. And so it started very young. So then, you know, my mother was an influence because she was a sewer, you know, so there was influence coming from that area as well. And then my sister and I took some classes together on clothing sewing. So, you know, all these things kind of come together eventually. And then as far as, I have no art training of any kind. I was a health and phys ed major. Mm -hmm. And so if you had asked me if I was going in this direction, I would have said you were crazy when I was younger. I never saw this. So just all comes together, I think. It's life experiences, and they just keep building, and then it just kind of all comes together. I started quilting as a hobby, and it started really because I took some classes. Mm -hmm. And when I was working in insurance, one of the um, things that they encouraged us to do was to take some continuing education classes in insurance. And they were probably the most boring classes ever. Mm -hmm. They were awful. It was like torture. And so just to be funny, I made a comment to some of the girls that I worked with and some of the guys. I said, well, my next continuing education class is going to be a quilting class. And so that's what I decided I was going to do instead of taking another insurance class. And I have no regrets about that because it really took me on a different course. But I started in just a basic learning how to quilt class and was following other people's designs, working from patterns that were given to me or that I purchased. And then after I quilted for, I'd say maybe three years, um, my husband kept saying to me, why don't you design your own? And I kept saying, because I was a health and phys ed major. Mm -hmm. I didn't really think I was capable. Mm -hmm. And he kept giving me a little push, a little push. And then finally I tried it and I went, holy cow, I had no idea I could do that. And so it was a surprise to me that when I started doing it, the things that kind of came out and what I started making. Goodness, yes. I love I love all kinds of art. Uh, in my house, for example, I have watercolors uh, from some artists, some Pennsylvania, some elsewhere, and a piece that's hanging over here I purchased in Mexico. It's called yarn art. I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it so much I had that big piece shipped back from Mexico. <laughs> that's how much I loved it. But to, for me, that was somebody else working by hand and what their art was, but I truly appreciate other art. Mm -hmm. And even though I think my art falls more, I would say more on a traditional side, I like contemporary art, I like, I like other people's art. I like to see what other people are inspired by. And so I, I like a lot, of, a lot of kinds of art other than just what I do. I wanna say that often yes, like the last quilt that I did was very influenced by trips to Mexico. And so a lot of the blocks in it were inspired by those trips that I had taken to Mexico and pottery that I had seen and dishes, like elements that were in those that really got me going on that quilt. And the blocks were designed just randomly, so it was kind of a different uh, concept for me because I tend to do more like the quilt behind me, more of a medallion style where it radiates out from the center. But uh, yeah, they're often influenced by different places I've been, color combinations and things that I've seen. Like one of the quilts that I just finished working on with my quilt field, the colors were very strongly influenced from a trip to Santa Fe. It's, it's got all those colors. It's kind of got the rust, it's got those blues, those turquoise blues. But it was funny because I didn't realize that until after I had the colors picked. I went, wow, you know, I know where that came from. Because yeah. just coming back from that area, you see all the turquoise jewelry, that color, and it just sort of, I guess, just stays with you for a while. It varies for me. It, you know, sometimes it just, 
I look at something and that gets me started. Mm -hmm. And so it could be, my influence could come from something I see in a carpet, something I see in a wallpaper, something I see in a ceiling tile. Sometimes it's just inspired by a color, some, you know, something I see color-wise. I love teaching. <laughs> it's kind of a fun part of what I do. I was very lucky um, that over the years, many of my quilts were photographed and ended up on the covers of um, major national quilting magazines. Mm -hmm. And so when people saw my work, they wanted to know how I did it. I mean, that was sort of what got me started teaching more. I started teaching just locally, and then when the magazines came out over the years, then I started teaching all over the place. And one of the big bonuses, not only do I love to teach, it's like when I walk out at the end of that class, and those students are saying to me, I never thought I could do that. And they have, you know, they start on a project. Very rarely in the type of classes I teach do they finish a project. They start mm -hmm. on it. So I'm teaching a lot about techniques and how to achieve the type of things that I do. Yeah. It's, I don't teach a lot of design classes. My classes are more geared towards technique. But I am always just thrilled when I leave that room and those students, you can sort of see the look in their face and they're like, wow, that's amazing. I mean, they had a good day, they felt like they spent their money well, and they actually learned something that they will use on another project after they walk out of that room. Mm -hmm. So teaching to me is big. I mean, it's, it's I want something I love. Oh yes, <laughs> there is no doubt in my mind. You know, but I still am active. I still, every morning, I am walking. I used to run, but my knees just don't like that anymore, and mm -hmm. so I figure I can still walk. And so I do that and I go to the gym regularly. So I haven't given that up, mm -hmm. but I am thrilled to death that my life took that change because I really love what I do. I have absolutely love it. How has it transformed my life? Well, I've certainly got to meet a lot of interesting people as a result of it. Mm -hmm. And I meet a lot of people when I travel. So that to me is amazing because I get to know a lot of different people in a lot of different walks of life. Mm -hmm. And so that that's important to me. It's an enjoyable part of what I get to do. And I can honestly say there isn't one part of what I do that I really don't like. It's mm -hmm. my art took me to a lot of different places with all of my quilting. And I developed products which I now market and so that became another aspect of what I'm doing but it all connects back to the quilt. It's mm -hmm. all connecting back to that. I'm thrilled to death that my life took that change because I really love what I do. I absolutely love it.